in Canada. It's almost two weeks now since the truckers have rolled into capital city, uh, Ottawa, to uh, peacefully protest. It has been a hundred percent peaceful, no issues whatsoever. Um, and this has been ongoing and there's been so many stories coming out of here. I mean, my God, this could be a documentary or a book at this point. It's only been two weeks in. So we have, we have reports now uh, at the beginning of this week, the truckers have been there. They're getting low on fuel. We have the reports of the police seizing their gasoline. This is what that looked like. Take a look. So here the officers have come in and started to steal the fuel that the volunteers locally have been bringing in. It was their first attempt. Now our move. So, in fact, yes, they are taking fuel right away from people as they attempt to fuel their vehicles. Wow. So the, the people are bringing fuel so the truckers could stay there, probably keep their engines running, right, and, and stay warm, things like that. And, and uh, I mean, and the police are stealing, stealing fuel. Right, right. Amazing. And great work to everyone there on the ground live streaming. This is the eyes and ears of the world, really, uh, through your phone. Yeah. So thank you so much. And so the headlines look like this. Uh, this is out of Ottawa. Ottawa mayor declares state of emergency as police threaten arrests for bringing gas to Freedom Convoy. But as so many of these stories we're going to cover right now, it takes 24 hours or so for it to flip right on its head. So this is what it looks like at this point. People have now in mass be, begun bringing gas to the truckers and disobeying these police orders. Wow. Take a look. <laughs> Woo! Play your next move, Trudeau. Play your next move, Trudeau. <laughs> I love how they keep trying to incite like this fear thing, like, oh, they're violent, like we're all at risk when all they're doing, like, no, they're just bringing gas to each other. Like they're, they, they do realize they outnumber you for sure. They're walking peacefully and doing whatever they want to do. And the power to the people, man, this is such a, it's such an exciting moment to be watching that. Yeah, completely peaceful. And so that's a little taste of what's happening outside on the streets of Canada. But here's a taste of what's been happening inside Parliament and what Trudeau is have to dealing with, what Prime Minister Trudeau is having been dealing with. Take, take a look. Okay. Comes to lockdowns and mandates, we're seeing things change very quickly, and rightly so. Dr. Tam has said that vaccine mandates should be reevaluated, and today the chair of the Quebec Liberal Caucus clearly and strongly stated it's time to end the divisiveness and the politicization and end the mandates. We Conservatives could not agree more. This cannot be a slow and dragged out process simply because of the Prime Minister's ego, pride, or denial. Canadians are too tired. Canadians need hope. So will the Prime Minister follow the science, follow the evidence, and the restrictions, and the mandates? The right honourable Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker. Everyone is sick and tired of lockdowns, of uh, the measures we have to do, of the sacrifices we've had to make. But Canadians have continued to step up over the past two years, been there for each other, been there to get vaccinated. And that's uh, the unity we've seen across the country of people who've been there for their neighbours, who've been there for their frontline health workers. That's what Canadians are going to continue to do. That's how we get through and back to the things we love. We're going to continue to follow the science, we're going to continue to have Canadians' backs, we're going to continue to protect people's lives. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Countries like Ireland, Sweden, Norway, Israel, Czech Republic, the UK, Spain, Denmark, they're all removing restrictions and mandates, and they're all countries that have a lower vaccine rate than Canada. Hmm. Here in Canada, though, we have a Prime Minister who refuses to lead and instead is being divisive. I have to agree with the MP for Louis Hebert when he says, people don't know where public health ends and politics begins. Canadians want their lives back. So again, I ask the Prime Minister, Will you follow, will he follow the evidence? Will he follow the science and the mandates and the restrictions quickly? The right honorable prime minister.
Minister. Mr. Speaker, every step of the way, we have had Canadians' backs by following the science, by working closely with COVID. A lot of noise back there. Finally, Trudeau just gives up. It's clear he's outnumbered even inside the halls of Parliament. And here's, here's members of his own cabinet now. So let's go to these videos. This is Joe Liba. He is a member of the parliament and he came out uh, just a couple days ago and had a press conference. This is what it looked like. Yeah. I think it's time to stop dividing Canadians, to stop pitting one part of the population against another. I can't help but notice with regret that both the tone and the policies of my government changed drastically on the eve and during the last election campaign. From a positive and unifying approach, a decision was made to wedge, to divide, and to stigmatize. I fear that this politicization of the pandemic risks undermining the public's trust in our public health institutions. This is not a risk we ought to be taking lightly. Wow. Yeah. And then we have Saskatchewan Premier Scott Moe. We talked about him last week. He said he was going to end the vaccine passport. Well, he came out this week as well, and basically the same time as Joe Liebaun. And this is what this sounded like. Here's his press conference. Take a look. It's time for us to come together as families, as friends, as, as communities, and as a province and as a nation. And it's time for us to reach out and support one another. Let's not judge our neighbor because they may be vaccinated or because they may not be vaccinated. Let's not judge our neighbor if they should choose to wear a mask or not to choose to wear a mask in the weeks ahead. Whenever someone is doing their own personal risk assessment, which we have asked them to do in this province for a period of time now, uh, they're doing that assessment for themselves, possibly for their family, and they may come back with a, a different decision than what you might uh, arrive at. And that different conclusion, albeit maybe different from where you have landed, should not be judged. It should be respected and it should be accepted. It's time for each of us as individuals now to make a conscious effort to treat everyone in our daily lives that we encounter equally. It's also time for the proof of vaccination mandate to end. So effective at midnight this Sunday, February the 13th, all provincial proof of vaccination requirements will end. Wow. You know, I, I want to say this to people because there's a lot of people that watch the show and I see the comments and there's always this sort of Debbie Downer space like, oh, this is all a part of their plan. They're just relaxing us so they could come at us again. Please screw your brain back in. Trust me. Nobody ever wanted to see their own government, the governments of the world, turning on the issue of mandating vaccinations, of mandating lockdowns. Do you realize how hard it will be to ever get back to this place for those that this was their dream? I mean, this is amazing. They have messed up so bad. This conversation now of forcing vaccinations is not going to end here. For all of us that have been in this conversation, the idea that the government tells you what is going into your body is totally insane. And believe me, this thing has blown wide open. I said it at the beginning of this pandemic. I said it as soon as they started trying to make the sausage in front of everybody, you know, by trying to make this vaccine. This is going to be the greatest mistake they have ever made. And we're going to make sure the world is watching it. Look what's happening, Jeffrey. I mean, these are conversations mm -hmm. that are going to go down history. This is a turning point for the conversation of mandated vaccines and mandated lockdowns that will affect decades to come. We just have to make sure that we keep pushing. We've got to stay strong now there's no i mean it's gonna be so hard for them to get back to this place again huge huge right. error uh an overstep by governments around the world right it supercharged people's eyes and ears to watch out for this it's supercharged media outlets to finally understand you know they've been asleep at the wheel on the vaccine topic for yeah. so long uh, it, they, they've been supercharged they've been quick studies to report on this and it's been beautiful to watch and uh following scott mo there in saskatchewan we have alberta also following suit uh here's the headline alberta's vaccine passport program lifted as of midnight Tuesday. So there were some funds now. Here's another side story or sub story. There's so many going on here in Canada. Yeah. So the truckers were, were able to raise almost $10 million from GoFundMe, but GoFundMe suspended that, uh, that, that charity giving or the, 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 
the fundraiser, trucker convoy, GoFundMe suspended. Put, it was put under review after raising over $10 million. GoFundMe se basically seized their funds and said, we'll, we'll let them go to a charity that we approve of if you want to get your funds back. And that's basically the only way you're going to get it. Well, days later, uh, this is what the headlines look like. GoFundMe relents after backlash. Thank you to the people. We'll refund all donors to Canadian trucker fund. So at this point now, the Canadian truckers uh, searched around and there was a bunch of links going on out there about where they would go next. They went to Give, Send, Go. Here's the link for that now. Here's a screenshot of it. And it's approaching now almost nine, uh, it says here 7.5 million. But as of today, I looked at it, it's over $8 million um, on its way to 9 million. So they're, they're really doing some some great work over there and if you want to give to that that's the the fundraiser there but another side story here and we'll wrap up with this well hold on before is, you go there because i want to make this point as we're talking about this do you realize what gofundme just proved to the world what they just proved to the world is that money may never get to the source that it was being raised for that they feel that that money is theirs to spend how they see fit any of you that ever use gofundme again deserve whatever happens to you go to give send go let's make sure that we stall any institution that takes our money, steals our money, and then has headlines telling us we're going to spend it wherever we see fit. That is the exact opposite of the type of security we should be expecting from a company like GoFundMe. So GoFundMe, go fund yourself. <laughs> And uh, that's kind of what the tow truck companies are saying to the Ottawa government. Check out this headline. Tow truck companies refuse to haul away large trucks gridlocking Ottawa. So it says here, this is an incredible story. All tow truck companies on contract with the city have refused to haul away the big rigs that have gridlocked Ottawa's downtown <laughs> for the second week in a row, the city manager says. So we're having tow truck civil disobedience. Um, it seems like everywhere this government turns to try to kind of use some, some, some back room thuggery it's just blowing up in their face in, in a very beautiful and peaceful way i might add so uh trudeau really looks like he's on the ropes here I, i'm really interested to see what's going to happen coming into this week but you know this this trucker convoy really just it took the it captured the consciousness of the moment and put it on the streets in yeah. canada and it's being repeated all over the all over the the world uh but it also captured the hearts and minds of the world take a look at this Okay. I just uh, got overwhelmed. We opened up one of the bags to see what they were, what they had in them, and I got punched in the heart. Um, whoever these people are, they had their kids do up uh, a bag with a cookie in it for the truckers, and they attached a note with it, put their artwork on there. Sorry, I'm getting emotional again. I'm going to show you what it was. And this is why we're doing what we're doing. Reach for the stars. We believe in you. And there's a picture of a truck. Inside of it, they left a note. The note says, Dear Mr. or Mrs. Trucker, it's really awesome that you're standing up for human rights. I'm only 11, so I don't know much about it, but I believe what's happening is wrong. And I know you can do it. Sincerely, Kate. Wow. It's really beautiful. It's amazing. And it is. It's truly touching our hearts. Uh, to all those truckers out there, I know many of you are watching The High Wire. Thank you for your sacrifice. Uh, thank you for standing up. And it really, you know, people have always asked me, you know, as, as we go through this, where is our Rosa Parks? And I have said from the beginning, you don't decide that. You don't know what that breaking point is or who's going to be standing in that. But I have to say right now, it does feel like these truckers up in Canada have really sparked something, a shift like nothing else has all around the world. So thank you so much for those of you organizing it. Uh, may you remain safe. All of you, our prayers are with you. Just absolutely outstanding and truly what it means to be a human being uh, and a brother and a sister on this earth together.